QuickBooks Online 2023. Reversing entry, loan payable short-term and long-term portions. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30 day free trial. We also have opened the free QuickBooks Online sample company. If you want the two open at the same time, we suggest incognito. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Or another browser, you can open the incognito window if using Google Chrome by selecting the three dots in the browser incognito window, type in into the search engine QuickBooks Online test drive. We're using the sample company to compare the accounting view, the one Get Great Guitars is in, and the business view, the one the sample company is in. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top, switch the view down below. Duplicating some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate it. We're going to right click that duplicated tab and we're going to duplicate that duplicated tab. Then we're going to go back to the duplicated tab that we duplicated first and then down to the reports on the left hand side so that we can open up a balance sheet report. By the way, if you're in the business view, the reports are located in the business overview and then the reports on the left hand side, just so you know. Tab to the right, we're going to go down to the reports on the left, this time opening up the profit and the loss, closing up the hamburger, scrolling up. We're going to change the range from 01, 01, 23 to 02. Let's go to 03, 3123. A little bit of a switch up because we're going to be doing a reversing entry this time. Remember, the cutoff date is 228, February 28th, but we're going to reverse it as of the first day of the following period, in our case, 3 1, uh, March 1st drop down we're going to go to the months see it on a month by month so there's january there's feb there's march the cutoff date is feb 28 going back to the tab to the middle closing up the hand buggy change that range once again to the same 010123 to 033123 also with the drop down want to see it on a month by month and run it to refresh it this is where we are at now last time you will recall and if you don't recall, we'll just kind of recap it. So don't worry about it. We were down here in the liability area and we were, we were talking about the fact that we had the short-term and long-term liabilities for the loans. So we had each of our loans, we wanted to break out on their own loan account for the internal reporting purposes. And then we put each of those multiple loans under a parent account of loan payable that works well internally because then I can tie each of those loans out to their respective amortization schedules and track them nicely and accordingly. But some of the loans might have a short term and long term portion as this second loan down here did, which is necessary for external reporting purposes, which might not be necessary for small businesses who, who are doing like a schedule C because they might not have the external reporting needs just needing the income statement for their tax preparation. But Oftentimes you need to break out for external reporting on the balance sheet, short term and long term. It's also useful to, to try to see if you can cover your current assets with your current liabilities. So we have to break that out. So we did that here with the adjusting entry for this particular loan, having a short term portion of the 13108, which we could see here, which is the sum of, of the next 12, 12 reductions to the, to the principal payment amounts, not including the interest portion. And then down here, we got the long-term amount, which according to our amortization is where we will be, which you could get to where we are now, minus the short-term, or it's also this number where we will be after a year from the current point in time. So now the problem is, well, that's correct. We got it to be correct as of the cutoff date, but the adjusting department can't stop there 
because now when I go back to the accounting department, accounting side of things, I've got this short-term and long-term portion. I can't just tie out one loan balance to the amortization table. Every time I make a payment, I would need to, if I'm gonna use this short-term and long-term method for this particular loan, readjust the short-term and long-term portion. That's way too tedious. No one wants to do that. That's why we have an adjusting entry process in the first place. Therefore, we're gonna reverse our adjusting entry to put everything back in one account as of the first day of the next period so that we can get things right as of the cutoff date and get things back to where they're right for the bookkeeping standpoint and the, the ease of data input for, uh, for the normal accounting process with the reversing entry after the cutoff date. All right, so let's go into this February just to look at the loan and see how we're gonna reverse it. If I go into it here, there's the, there's the adjusting entry we, we made. And of course we could just reverse it entirely. So you might even like take a screenshot of this and then paste it somewhere and then do the exact opposite of it. Now that I see that and the other way you could do it is with a, with a register. So, so I'm gonna close this back out. Since there's only two accounts affected, let's use the register method. So I'm gonna go back and then go to the tab to the left and we're gonna go into our chart of accounts, accounting on the left-hand side and chart of accounts. If you're in the business view, by the way, the chart of accounts, in case you were wondering, although I'm sure you know by now, if you've been following along, it's in the bookkeeping and then the chart of accounts. And then we're gonna to go to the chart of accounts, close this back out. Now these are both balance sheet accounts, so I can open up either uh, of them using the register. So I think the easy one might be the long-term because I need to bring it back to zero. So that's this one down here. So I'm gonna go into the register related to my loan and I'm just gonna reverse the journal entry I did before bringing it back to zero. So I'm gonna go drop down journal entry 030123 and we'll do this is gonna be called a reversing entry. And this is gonna be a decrease for that same amount, which I could find here or I can find there. I'm just gonna reverse that so it goes back to one account with the total of the 6987813. So we're gonna say, all right, this is gonna be 56769.59 uh, decrease. And the other side going to loan, loan payable and the chase loan for the short term, current liabilities. There it is, Mui B to the N. Let's go ahead and run it. Running. I was running. Back to the tab, you may not, you may not believe this, but I can run like the wind blows. Not really. I'm gonna scroll down and then note as of the cutoff date now, if I go to my liabilities, we can see that we still have as of the cutoff date. It's so nice that we can see it side by side like this. The cutoff date, you'll recall, is 228, February 28th, 13108. And then we reversed it, bringing us back to the total loan balance in one account so that the accounting department can then do their thing, recording the next transaction uh, to one account instead of having this crazy two account thing happening down here in the long-term portion. We broke out the long-term portion in accordance with our amortization schedule here and here or here, whichever way you wanna look at it. And then we brought it back to zero because I don't wanna have that other account involved per loan when I'm doing the day-to-day -day journal entry. That's what I'm talking about. So if I go back up, so that looks good. If I go into the transaction, it happened on 3-1. So there's our, our journal entry. And of course, if I go into the journal entry, we could see it in journal entry format. I'm gonna copy it, put it down here as well in the description. And so that looks good. No impact on the income statement for this particular adjusting entry. It's just two balance sheet accounts breaking up between the short-term and long-term portions. All right, so that's it. Let's, let's open up some reports on the right-hand side, right-clicking to duplicate the tab. Let's look at the journal report this time because I don't think we did last time and we could see the adjusting and reversing entries scrolling down to the reports on the left-hand side to do so. Closing up the boogie, typing into the reports, journal, the journal. And then I'm gonna do the adjusting entry, which we did last time as of 02-2823, 02-2823, all adjusting entries as of the cutoff date, 228. We wanna look at it, filter it by journals only customizing up top to do so we want to hit the filter drop down 
boom, hit it. And then we're going to say this is a journal. Run it. And so there we have it. So these first two, we're not adjusting entries. We might show how to how to remove them. We can export to Excel and remove them if we're trying to give this to a client or something. These are the adjusting entries as of 228. This is the one that we did last time. And uh, this is the uh, adjusting entry that we're going to reverse now. So now we're going to reverse it. So if I go back up top and go one day up, boom, boom, run it. So now we have reversed it. And it's interesting because notice the debits and credits are like the thing that was kind of making me uh, look at it a little funny is before like if I was to enter this with a journal entry, I would have put the debit on top because <laughs> I'm the adjusting entry. But because we use the register, we just happened to they we happened to use it in QuickBooks put this one on top so which was which was kind of making me but remember the general idea it doesn't matter but that but the general idea is that when i then make the reversing entry i would usually uh reverse this the same format meaning i'm not going to change the order of of the which is on top i'm just going to change the debits and credits it just kind of i was going to mention that but but then i noticed that it did the opposite with the original journal entry because of the use of the register but in any case interesting little thing there at least i thought it was probably not that interesting in it but anyways there it is so now let's now let's open up our trial balance i'm gonna open up the ham boogie reports i thought it was interesting or i thought i'd just explain why why i was wigging out here trial balance trial balance it was totally a justifiable wig out 010123 to 033123. And then we're going to hit the drop down month by month. We want to see it run it January, February, March. So the cutoff date, 228, February 28th. But then we reversed it in March. So you can check your numbers if you're tying out. Great. If not, try to expand the date range. See if we entered something in the wrong date range or something like that. And then at the end of the period, we'll take a closer look at those journal reports to further drill down on any discrepancies so we can demolish the differences and do away with the discrepancies.